Hey. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so this is a, a talk on fluid gestures. I mean, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about yet. So, but I'm Eric, and I'm a senior Android engineer at Tumblr. Uh, we're based out of New York, so put all out here. But this, uh, San Francisco is an awesome place. All right. So we have animations in Android. Here's one of the cool ones. We we got the Material Design Award uh, back in uh, Joycon uh, 2015 uh, for like animations and ones similar to this. Uh, and, and we have gestures, right? Sort of um, something, a, a cool one I find uh, in, in, in Google Maps is uh, this like tilt gesture. You, I, mean, you don't, I mean, I don't see why anyone uses this, right? Like, I don't know, it's cool. You can see it, buildings in 3D, maybe like if you're in New York or something like that, uh, you can go and, and, and try to get a sense of where you are. Yeah, walk through New York virtually. Maybe, maybe that's the cool new VR thing that everyone's excited for. Um, but it's, a, it's a definitely a, a cool feature, a cool hidden feature uh, that, you, that you have in Google Maps. So, so the point of fluid gestures, sort of uh, similar to what uh, Will was talking about with Rebound, is you take gestures, you take the, these motions, and you combine them with animations. And, and I call them fluid gestures. Um, there's a much older term called uh, direct manipulation that takes that concept and, and, and says, if the user can move uh, a view or some sort of uh, thing on the screen at the same time as, as, their, as their finger is moving, then they have a direct motion of, like, of, uh, a, a, of feedback. Right? Their touch position is directly corresponding to their view position. And a great example of this is scrolling. Like, no one had to teach you how to scroll. Uh, on your phone, there's no, there's no. You did not op open up your phone and said, "This is how you scroll. This is how you slide to unlock," on the on, on on iOS, right? Like that. That was a gesture that was like something that like, oh, this makes sense. Like the what I'm doing on the screen corresponds to what is happening, and and uh, and that's the sort of UI that feels natural, right? And like it's kind of to me like uh, a good example is like when you pick up a cup, right? Um, you you don't know how heavy your cup is. You just like go and you feel it out. And if it seems too heavy, you, 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 you increase your grip, for example. So it's, it's, it's that notion of feedback. It's, 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 uh, as, as, you, as the view changes, then you can go and, and adjust what you're doing. So what, 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 are, uh, what is a fluid gesture? It teaches users with animations. Right? You didn't have to have a tutorial uh, to, to figure out uh, what to do. Um, and a, a big benefit that I really like is you can a lot of these gestures, at least the ones that I think are good, are the ones where you can cancel halfway, where you can say, hey, I didn't actually want to go back. Hey, I didn't actually want to open that screen. And power users, it doesn't get in the way. Right? You go and you just fling it a little bit faster, and it closes a little bit faster. Um, sometimes you have a tap animation or a long press or something like that, and that's like, now you have the hold, you have the hold in the, like two seconds, and then the thing that you want will actually happen. So on the, well, I'm just going to go through a bunch of examples. Uh, Another one is like view pagers. So there's like a really common onboarding experience that you see a lot of designers use nowadays, where you can sort of like page between these different screens. Um, so there's a really terrible photo of me, but uh, <laughs> Snapchat has this hidden view page. I, like this is something that you have to kind of discover on your own that you can go and page through uh, these uh, different filters, right? But they have a, an even more advanced version. You can go and hold your finger. You see my finger. And the, the bottom left there, holding down one of my fingers. And then I use my other finger, and I can apply two filters at the same time. So like Snapchat, I think, has a lot of these hidden gestures. Uh, and, and they even have to like um, have a little tutorial just to, to, for you to find them. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe they're too gesture heavy, uh, because they don't have any UI elements to sort of indicate that you can do it. Um, so another example here is a sort of like double view pager situation, right? You can go up, you can go down, you can go left, you can go right. Um, so like, I'm going to go back here, I'm going to go left. Like there's like multiple dimensions and you don't know. You don't even have like your nav bar at the bottom. I mean, it's cool. I don't know if it's like one thing that like users intuitively figure out. And I guess they, they added that tutorial, so probably not. Um, so that might be like a, one that goes a little too far. Uh, and here's another hidden one that I really like. Um, you can go and, and flip between different tabs in Google Chrome right? without actually going through that menu. 
uh, where, you, where you can see all your tabs. And, and this is something like maybe they should have taught users to do something. Maybe they should have added some sort of indicator that you can do this. Or maybe it's just a power user feature. You know, some of these things you would have to admit there's another way to do it, uh, unlike the Snapchat example. Uh, so another example is, is dragging. Um, so here's a really simple slider. Um, this one's a little, a, little, a little fancier than your, your normal one that comes with uh, Android. Uh, but it's kind of cool. I mean, it's, you, you know what you're doing. You're scrubbing through this, uh, this uh, song or this mixtape. Um, but I mean, it's also tremendously useful. Like, if you wanted to reorder something in a list, like, I don't know how, like, there might be some complicated checkbox situation for, for rearranging items, but this is super natural, right? This is something that's like, you go and you click on the item, you drag it, and then you place it where you want it to be. You have this, like, hover state uh, situation. So it's shadow, uh, if shadow is the right word. <laughs> and, and, and something here is a, a more complicated Tumblr feature where you can go and, and take a set of photos and, and rearrange them. Um, and I think this is something, it's a little more restricted than, than what you can do with uh, Instagram's, uh, um, I think it's called layout. And, and it's, it's sort of natural in some sense, but you sort of also get a sense of what the rules are. You can only have three photos in a row. Um, each photo uh, must be in a row or something like that. Um, it's something that the animations help you figure out what you can and can't do. Right, because if the if the photos don't move, then like maybe you can't do that. Um, cool. And another uh, example is uh, transitions. Um, so here in this case, this is one that I, I don't know how I discovered. I discovered it accidentally when I was like using the Dropbox app. Uh, you can kind of do the same sort of thing that you can do in, in newer iOS versions, where you can go and and, and swipe to go back. Uh, and it's not really obvious because you can see I'm going back, uh, I'm going back forward here, and then and then what's happening there is like, how did I know that I could do that? There was no animation that said, oh, you know, you can also swipe to go back. Um, but it's something that's also also really useful. I mean, they added it to iOS uh, because on on big phones it's something that you just can't reach that button. But I guess they figured it's cool here, even though the, there's a back button on the bottom left. Sometimes maybe power users want to go back faster. I don't know. Um, and this is all the same sort of transition. I don't know why they added the 3D part, but maybe it, it, it made it more obvious to, to users that you're, you're in this like layered uh, 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 view where you can view the multiple tabs in Google Chrome. So here's a really crazy one. I don't know how long it took them to do this. Um, Basically, like you can you can drag on this uh, on this uh, view, and it, it it will transition back to the previous screen. So I, I went from th that grid of um, Snapchat uh, uh, Discover partners to to this uh, uh, Snapchat story, and and you can drag, and it does this like cool animation. It's playing the video while it's like doing this reveal transition. I mean, there's a lot going on there, but it it, it makes sense if I mean something you would never really need to use. There's nothing telling you that you can do this. Um, if, but if you hit the back button, it does the reverse of this animation. So maybe it kind of makes sense. Um, and here's another one that I found in Google Photos. I don't, like, this is pretty crazy. Uh, you can pinch to go back to the previous screen. Uh, and, and, and I think I've seen this in, other, in some, maybe, maybe some iOS apps. I, I, I remember the Tumblr iOS app had it uh, for a while. Um, and it's something that's like, it's cool to do, it feels good, and, and it makes sense. I mean, it's like, if, if you weren't sure how to go back, then like, maybe you can just do that, I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's, it, it, make, it makes your, your interface feel more, more realistic. It's, it feels like you, you actually have uh, something in front of you that you can sort of like, uh, uh, interact with. In, in a more, like, the, you don't feel as restricted as when you're just tapping buttons. Um, and another big one that they just added to the design support library. And also they added to the, I think, the, the, the design, material design guidelines is the, the bottom sheet, which you see in a lot, like a lot of types of apps have this, like a lot of um, like uh, audio playing apps have, have something like this where you can constantly access the, the, currently, the song that you're currently playing, right? Cool, and this is like, 
a little more advanced. Like you can go and 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 drag this bottom uh, sheet up, and there's an additional parallax thing going on here. Uh, but it makes sense what's going on. You can see, you can understand all the transitions. Uh, but it's like you can also just tap on that thing and it'll come up, right? Uh, so if you just wanted to peek at the photo, you want to peek at the, the the information without actually opening up the entire screen. I mean, you can you can also drag. And and I I just found out recently that like Google Keep uh, has like the ability to just draw things in it. Uh, and here they got the, this like double stack like sort of. Uh, a bottom sheet thing where it pops up the, the, the size indicator first. And then if you want some more options, you can go in and check out the colors that they have. Um, and it, I just have so many examples. Um, and here's one for a calendar. You can, once you open up that calendar view, you can drag the, where you can see my finger is, is, on, is on Wednesday, and I'm, and I'm dragging that uh, week view back up and, make it, and, and making it uh, bigger. So then hiding the, the full month view. So there's some other insane ones. Um, I'm, just, I'm sure there's even more than the, the ones I've found. Uh, and this is one I just made. Uh, hopefully it works. OK, cool. Yeah, so in, in, in Foursquare, once you check in, you got this dialog. Um, they, have some, they have a lot of animations in this app. You can drag it. You can do this like, weird dragging thing. I don't know why they did that. Uh, and then you, you could do it again on all, all the dialogues. And there's like that, that coin animation, too. Um, but I think one that's very, very useful, uh, unlike the Foursquare one, is the, the, uh, the YouTube picture-in-picture uh, uh, -picture sort of video player, right? Where you can go and uh, watch a video while you're just browsing the rest of, the, of YouTube. Um, and 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 you can go and make make it bigger again. I didn't. I don't have it in this uh, in this video. But you can you can also drag it back up and decide. Hey, I, I do want to watch this video. Um, or you can just like swipe it away. So there's like a lot of interactions that are possible. But it's it's obvious how to how to interact with that uh, in some sense. And also you can cancel it, which is nice. Like you can say, oh, wait, I actually don't want this picture in picture thing. I want I want to see the full video. So like I was saying, like, what is a good gesture? It, has to, it should be simple. Um, you, can, you can have things that have, like, require like three fingers, four fingers. I mean, I think uh, iOS and, and OS X are, are, are very uh, known for these, these like, four-finger gestures. Um, I mean, those things don't really work on a phone. They might work on an iPad. Uh, but re really, if you're using your phone in your hand, like, requiring the user to have like, more than one finger at the, at the same time is a little bit difficult. Um, and, I, and I think a big part of it for me is like it should be reversible. It should be something where uh, it's obvious, like, hey, I actually maybe don't want to do this. I'm just peeking, like going uh, going back to the previous screen. Like sometimes I forgot. Well, which folder am I in? Oh, I can go and and swipe, peek, check. Mm, yeah, I think I know what folder I'm in now. I'm going to just go back to the the screen that I was on. Uh, and and they should be consistent. It should it should be obvious. Like, hey, if I do this action, it will do this thing. Uh, if you go and try to overload, sort of like operator overloading, uh, you're, you're, you're just going to confuse your users. They're just not going to know, like, oh, what it, does this action do? And, and part of it is, being, like, is related to being reversible. If the action is reversible, then, hey, they can check it out without actually like, canceling what they're doing. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of examples that I missed, like you know, swiping away your, your email in, in, in inbox or Gmail. It's probably another well-known one. So, I think you all want to know how to, how to make these. I mean, a lot of these are, are already in the framework, like scrolling. You, could, you have the scroll view. You have the, the recycler view. You have the list view. You have the sliders. Um, as support library has a lot of these uh, um, additional material design sort of uh, components, uh, like the view pager. I mean, that's also in the framework, I guess. And, and, and bottom sheets, which they just added, like, I don't know, two weeks ago or something like that. Uh, and uh, I think the big thing I'm trying to I'm going to focus on in, in, in this talk is is how to use rebound, uh, like as well as saying yesterday. Um, and and there's two I think there's other than using rebound just by itself, um, there's Jagger, which I'll show you in a second, uh, and Backboard, which is the library that I'm going to talk about because I worked on it. <laughs> All right, so Jagger, 
just a, a brief aside, it does it, it does allows the sort of like the, the swipe to go back uh, um, animation, the sort of gesture, where you can go and, and go back to the previous activity, which is uh, pretty useful. It's a, it's a nice little library that lets you do this animation without trying to figure out, oh, do I screenshot the previous activity? Like, how do I like manage the fact that my entire activity is moving? Um, it just handles that for you. Very nice. It's also something that like iOS now has, like I was saying before, and 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 in iOS it's just built in. They don't go and 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 build this this uh, feature. So we're gonna get into uh, a little more complicated, I don't know, stuff. Um, so basically, like when you when you try to build this this these gestures, um, what's happening is that your user is touching the screen. You have an untouch listener, or or maybe a gesture detector or whatever. Uh, that emits like a motion event. It gives you an emotion event, and something happens. It goes to a spring. Your spring animates. So I'm assuming you know a little about rebound, where uh, you 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 set the end value of a spring, and it goes and and it animates, and then you get a spring listener callback every single time the spring moves, and you take that callback, and you're given you're given a value for like a, a, a position in the spring, and now. I think most of the time, what you end up doing is that you just map it to a, a, a view in a property, like a, pro a property of a view. Um, because if you, if you want to scale a view, you want to translate a view, like these are just view properties. Um, I mean, you can do other things that are not UI related, but I'm, you're going to talk about fluid gestures. <laughs> so the other thing that's kind of complicated about Rebound that I, uh, I found a little bit Hard to to uh, get my head around was um, your your view has owns your on touch listener right uh, you, you have to set the on touch listener so it, know, it knows about it uh, the on touch listener goes and and sets the end value or modifies this the spring the spring uh, owns or is related to like uh, the spring listener so it will go and, and and notify the spring listener every single time it animates and then the spring listener you go and and modify the view, and and this is something like you have to set up this entire architecture uh, when you when you are using rebound, and I found that um, it, it seemed to me like you would have issues with like uh, references and and maybe memory leaks because you know maybe you forget to unassign the the spring of the center from the the spring or or you forget to um, like basically detach these these callbacks from each other, um, and another thing that I was talking about, I, I said you had to do something to go from a motion event to the end value of a spring. Like what 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 do you do? Uh, and then you have to do the same thing in reverse. You have to go and take that value from the spring, and you have to map it to to a view position, right? Like uh, there's only so many things you're going to do here. Uh, but it's not obvious. Like, what, what, what should I like? What value should I set? Like, a motion event. You have an x and a y, and 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 maybe that corresponds to pixels. Um, and your 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 spring value should that be in pixels? Should that be in like DP? Uh, and then your view property probably also set in in pixels or DP or something like that. Or maybe if you're doing scale, like, what units are scaling? I don't know. Uh, and they have one, uh, there's one useful utility method, uh, map value from range to range, uh, which I'll talk, talk about. Um, and basically, that will help you do this sort of mapping. Um, so this is like the, the traditional uh, rebound example, uh, where you go, you press on the, the image, and it shrinks. Um, so I think we'll, we'll always talk about this uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, so, so, what, so what's really happening here? You, you get an action down motion event. You, you go from a previous value of zero, so that's like the, the lower, lower left, and you go to the upper right. You go to a value of one instantaneously, right? Uh, and then you take that and you map that value to the spring. So in this case, it's super simple. Uh, you're mapping from uh, zero to one, and then you're going to change your, the end value of your spring from zero to one. Uh, we don't really need an equation here. We don't really need... <laughs> map value from range to range. So that part is simple. But remember, that was there's scaling. You're not going from a scale of zero just to 
to a scale of, of one. And in code, uh, I think I'm using the same exact code that he showed yesterday, uh, because it's just directly from the examples. Um, so action down, you set the end value of one, you cancel, you, you lift up your finger, set an end value of zero, so you can imagine the other side of this square wave type thing, uh, this, uh, the, the leading edge be going down from one to zero when you lift your finger up. Um, so how do you take that spring value and, and, and convert that to uh, a scale? Well, in, in, in his uh, example, he takes the current value, applies this function, one minus 0 0.5 times the current value, and he sets that on the, the, the view. And it's, it's actually, I mean, simpler as like a, a, a map value from range to range. You're going from zero, zero to one, that range, uh, and, and you're taking that range, you're mapping that range uh, from one to uh, zero, uh, like half. So you take it, you're shrinking it by half, and, and then you're also flipping it. Um, so, makes sense. I didn't go and prove this. I'm sure you can go and write a proof that, that this math works out. <laughs> Uh, or you can look at the code. And, and, and here's the, the same code where you go and, and you use that equation to set the scale based on the current spring value. Right. Um, and he's doing it for scale x and scale y. So you can imagine you can have, uh, you could be changing multiple view properties at the same time. Um, so it's that same animation again when you, when you press down and it gets smaller. Cool. So, I think, uh, I think we've all seen the Facebook chat heads. And I think I have it here. There you go. Uh, and you can drag it around. I was thinking, like, how, how do I make this animation with rebound? How do I make this gesture happen with rebound? Um, because what do I use as my, as my uh, range of my spring? Like, do I take the screen coordinates and say, oh, 1 is equal to uh, the edge of the spring? Or do I, like, what, what happens with, like, y? And, and the more I thought about it, I was like, this is something I really shouldn't be thinking about. This is, this is something that should be a lot simpler. Uh, so actually, and, and another thing is that I saw that uh, Google Play Games added this, the ability to record yourself while you're playing a game, a similar sort of animation, but they don't have that sort of like physicality uh, where, where you have that bounciness that happens. It just, it just follows your finger directly, and when you drop your your head, I guess my head, <laughs> uh, on, the, on the X, it just like goes away. It doesn't like spring into place. I don't know like what range I need to be for that X to activate. Oh, there you go. Get the, the red thing. Um, so there's a similar sort of idea that in, in uh, Backboard where we try to go and, and move a view. So how do we do this in, in two dimensions? Well, you know that you're, taking, you're going to take motion event, get x, do something to it, and map it to via tra translation x, right? Some, so you're taking a, 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 pro a, a property in, in motion event and mapping it to a property on a view. And the thing I realized is like, you, you're never gonna map x to y, right? Like, wh wh what will you accomplish by doing that? Uh, and, and I think most of the time you, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna want the same thing. If you're, if you're doing this, this relationship between, from, from x in pixels to, to x in pixels, um, you're going to want the same consistent relationship in both axes and on a tablet versus uh, a phone, right? Because uh, something on a tablet, you wouldn't want your springs to be a little more springy because it's a bigger screen. It's, it, the user doesn't feel like they're on a bigger screen. They're not switching necessarily from device to device and testing if your animation is the same. But how, how do we write this, this uh, function? Like, and then you have to do, you have to do reverse. Like you, you, want, you're, you have pixels going in and you have pixels coming out. Uh, and you want a d direct relationship uh, between the user's motion and uh, the view's motion. So this is what Backward tries to solve. Um, there's a, a logo I spend way too much time making. <laughs> so basically, I, I saw that, um, and there, were, there weren't any names to that, to those concepts of like mapping from, from a, a touch listener to a spring, and then a spring to a view. So I 
I mean, these are terrible names, but uh, going from a motion event to a spring, I called an imitator. So it's in, in that sense, from the perspective of spring, the, the spring is imitating the motion of the, the, the motion event. Uh, and the performer takes the, the spring value, the current value of the spring, and maps that to a view property, right? So here's a, here's a simple example. Uh, it takes uh, a motion property, uh, x. So in this case, we've defined that relationship to say, like, hey, I know I'm, I'm, lo I'm going to look at the motion event x value, and I know that's going to correlate to the view property uh, translation x. Uh, so when you get a touch event, we will imitate that and, 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 and uh, perturb the spring. And a performer goes and does that on the other side. Uh, and well, I mean, in this case, it's a, it's a different spring. But uh, you're taking uh, the, the motion at spring and uh, mapping that to translation x. Right? Like, there's only so many view properties, and, and, and Google's already developed this, this framework where you can refer to view properties using uh, these. Uh, Generics, right? The the, the property generics. Uh, cool. So this so basically backboard is a, a sort of thin, very Swiss cheesy uh, layer on top of uh, rebound. Basically, you can go and you can use uh, a spring listener just like you're using before. You can use a touch listener like you're using before. Uh, but in this case, I gave them names. In this case, I gave them some functionality and. And if you want to do more complicated behavior, then uh, you, you can go and, and, and modify that or put in your own components. And, and there's this other thing called an actor, uh, which tries to tie these two concepts together. When you know about both sides of the animation, then it can just hook up the components. You know that you have this gesture happening, and you know that you want to take the user's input, and you want to wrap it directly to a view. I mean, you can do more sort of like uh, complicated interactions where a view moves another view in, in, in rebound. Uh, but we're focusing here on, on, on making things like chat heads, where it's, uh, you're, you're moving the same view that you are touching. So scaling a view on press, that same animation you saw earlier, the same gesture. Uh, this is how you would do it in, in, in Backboard. Uh, you go, you create a thing. So you create a spring, you have a spring system. Uh, and you take uh, a performer, but I have, a, I have a subclass of a performer that makes it a little bit easier to, to use. Um, and it, it adds that same map value to value uh, method uh, that, we, that we, you had to call manually before. And here we're specifying hey, we're going to map 0 to 1 to, to that same zero, uh, to 1 to uh, half. And, and we're going to do it in scale x and scale y. And then we're going to have a, a toggle imitator. So you can go in subclass and, and add that behavior uh, and reuse that behavior um, for your spring listeners. And a toggle imitator just says, on down, I'm going to go to 1. And when you lift up your finger, you're going to go up to you're going to mutate the, the spring to, to be a value of uh, uh, 0. So the same sort of interaction. So this is the same thing in, in uh, backward. So the, the rebound animation in backward. So that was a little bit of a digression. Uh, how do you do that x motion in, in uh, uh, backward? Um, well, part of it was. Uh, you, you, there's only so many interactions that are possible, right? You have motion events, which have like translation, and you have duration. I mean, you can do things with scale gesture. Um, maybe that'd be nice to add in the future. And you have animations, which are translation, scale, rotation, and maybe like frame animations. And there, I mean, there's other things you can do to views, uh, but then that already sounds very custom to me, <laughs> right? So. So a motion property x, like I was saying, it, it maps uh, um, the get x to translation x. Cool. And actors hook, hook up those uh, 
interactions. They, they hook up those callbacks together. And if you don't specify an imitator, you don't specify a performer, you can specify en enough information for it to, to sort of guess at what you're trying to do. And if uh, you want to customize that behavior, you can go and, and, and specify your own components. Uh, so that same, that the chat head animation is a lot easier in, in Backboard. And I think most of the time you're going to do the same thing. Um, you, can, you can add, so you do, you call add translate motion uh, in motion power x and it says, oh, okay. You want it move motion in the x direction and you gave me a view, you gave me a spring system so I can create a spring. Uh, and you also know that, oh, motion property x also says translation x is, is the desired uh, view property to animate. So I'm going to connect uh, the uh, motion in the x direction with the view motion in the x direction. And two dimensions, you're going to create another spring. So that's why you have to pass the spring system in uh, for like independent motion in two directions. Right? So you have x and you have y. And maybe in one day when we have VR, you could go in, do it in three dimensions. Um, so it's that same motion animation, uh, movement animation. So if you want to add custom behavior, uh, you can go in and subclass the, the motion imitator and say, in this case, on release, if the current value in the x direction is more than the width of the root view, uh, snap to the right to, to, on, to the right side. And if it's more than the direction, if it's less than that value, the, the, the middle value in uh, the x direction, then snap to the left. And you're going to be moving the translation x property on the view. And it, it'll make a lot more sense when you see this animation. You're on the left side, snap to the left. If you're on the right side, snap to the right. Um, this is something we consider doing in, in Tumblr with the floating action button. Maybe if you're a left-handed user, you'd want to go and uh, let the user move the, the floating action button to the left side because they're, they're, they're left-handed. Um, so uh, going back to chat heads, they have, it also has this like spring chain going on. There's like multiple heads. And I don't know if this scares any of you. You might be reminded of like control systems or some like crazy like mechanics class or something uh, where you have these springs coupled together and you have like a lot of crazy differential equations going on. Um, but luckily we do not have to worry about that. Uh, the, the solution is integrated for us uh, by rebound. So uh, what Will was showing yesterday, this sort of animation where, where you can move any of these views from side to side and the rest of them will move. Um, so I think uh, the spring chain animation in, in Rebound right now is like very specific to, to moving in one direction. Um, I'm not sure. Actually, actually, I haven't tried making it work in, in two directions, but it might be possible. Um, so uh, the solution in, in, in Backboard is that the, the imitator concept is sort of more generalized than just like you can imitate the, mo the motion of like a, a motion event. You can go and, and imitate the motion of another spring Right. Uh, so this spring imitator is also a spring listener, so you can add it to a, a leader spring in this case, and, and the follower spring can can get its value set based on the value of the leader spring. So in this case, like uh, when the leader spring moves, the follower spring will move uh, after with a delay. So here's a a, a nice diagram I made uh, where you have this the touch listener. It goes. The spring imitator is also a spring listener. So that value of the first spring, uh, when it changes, it goes and changes the value of the second spring. And that causes the value of the performer attached to the end to also change its value and, and, and move the view. And it also, you probably want to attach another spring listener to the first spring. And that would change the value of um, the, a view attached to the first spring. right? So you can get that chat animation, chat head animation. Um, if, I mean, if you just have two springs in a row, then you could just like add them together, I think, to create one spring. I don't remember physics, so, but it was something like that. And, and this is the same sort of hidden animation in Tumblr. I mean, there's no practical purpose to this, but you can drag the, the floating action button around and, and uh, see the compose icons uh, uh, underneath. So sort of like a whimsical, 
we'll call it feature, or, or, or a bit of a flourish. So that's a, a basic introduction to, to Backboard and, and, and Fluid Gestures. Uh, I'm Eric, and yeah, that's how you can contact me. And you should check out the, the library. All right, thanks. Are there any questions? I would say with activities, you should probably use something like Dragger. Um, it's just something that uh, it's, it's purposely built for that. It's a little bit it's problematic, though, because you may have to, it, it uses a translucent activity. And, and, and actually, iOS does this really clever trick where if you start to swipe back, it screenshots the current screen. And then it starts up the previous screen in the background so that, that the previous screen is the one that's actually active, and the current screen is the one that's just a screenshot. And that saves on like, memory. You don't have like, two screens running at the same time. So it's unique. <laughs> cool. All right, thanks for coming. <laughs>